welcome, uh, David from um, Shields of Strength. And yeah, obviously this uh, coronavirus have put us all into a, um, a funky situation that was unprecedented. So hence, uh, since seven, we thought, okay, what, what can we do to help out our customers? And one of the things we thought would be good to do is, you know, reach out to customers uh, like yourself, David, to see how they are coping with the current situation. Um, obviously, there's a lot of challenges. Um, but ultimately, we believe there will be opportunities even now or definitely in the long term. And, you know, from, from my perspective, it, it's one of those situations where... Um, uh, it, it sort of harps back to when, when I was about a month ago, I, I was in Washington, D.C., uh, just finished dinner with a client, found myself in Washington, D.C. at night and in the dark and in the cold. And my flight was really early in the morning uh, tomorrow. So I thought, OK, I'm just going to walk around and check out all the monuments. And probably the, mo the monument that impacted me the most was probably the Martin Luther King monument in terms of what it said on, on uh, one of the walls. That, um, yeah, the ultimate measure of the man is not when, you know, the standing in convenience and comfort. It is when the standing in times of challenge and controversy. And hence, I think that's where we see ourselves um, at the moment. So, yeah, yeah, David, it's um, just to give our listeners or our customers context. Can you maybe give a quick background on yourself and um, Shields of Strength just to give us some context? Sure. Um... I am a uh, retired soldier. I served uh, <clears throat> just short of 30 years in the United States Army. And um, my job when I was in the military was to put voice data and video on the battlefield. Uh, and so uh, I commanded units that did that, um, deployed in Afghanistan and Iraq multiple times. And um, when I was in command, um, I saw a dog tag um, that had a Bible verse on it that said, I'll be strong and courageous. I will not be terrified or discouraged because the Lord my God is with me where, wherever I go. And um, the average age in the battalion I was commanding at that time was about 20 years old. And so uh, most of those soldiers had never deployed before. Uh, and so um, I contacted what I thought was a large company. And at that point, it was just one guy and his wife and Kenny Vaughn out of Beaumont, Texas, that were making the Shields of Strength dog tags. And I told Kenny what uh, we were doing, that we were gonna leave early, soon after 9-11, to go in and put in a communications network in Afghanistan, Pakistan, and uh, Uzbekistan to get ready for following forces to come into the theater. And so um, Kenny shipped me 500 of the dog tags so that uh, I would have one per soldier in my unit, and he wouldn't take payment from me. And so that's how our friendship began in 2001. From 2001 till 2011, my last 10 years in the military, I shared um, Shields of Strength dog tags with soldiers in my units and with other people. Uh, during that time period, I gave away about 10,000 of the dog tags that Kenny Vaughn gave me. And um, when I retired from the Army, I wanted to do uh, something to continue to give back to soldiers and their families. <coughs> specifically family members of soldiers that had been killed. And so uh, I stood up a nonprofit called Point Two Seven, And with the nonprofit, um, we purchase Shields of Strength dog tags and we give them to members of the armed forces and their family members. And now we, we extended that into law enforcement officers and their families. After I got the nonprofit rolling, Kenny asked me if I'd come in and run the e-commerce business and Shields of Strength for him. And so I did in 2014, and I stood up the current website, <clears throat> working with Big Commerce and a couple of other vendors, one of which was Stitch Labs, to do our inventory control and uh, manage and order control. And then um, one of our uh, wholesale customers, AFES, the Army Air Force Exchange System, um, asked us to participate in, uh, in a program with them. And in order to do that, we needed to process EDI uh, transactions. And so the only solution that Stitch Labs offered was to partner with uh, one other vendor to do EDI transactions. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't comfortable with sole sourcing to one person. And uh, so I, I went out, I looked at a bunch of other different companies, uh, some of which were less expensive than the one that they wanted me to use. And I offered those back to Stitch Labs as a solution and um, they, they uh, had sole sourced that business to 
this one particular vendor and they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't, uh, you know, even talk to other vendors. And so in that search is when I found uh, Sin7. And what I loved about the company from the very beginning was um, that it was an integrated solution. It wasn't a, you had EDI capability in, uh, integral to the system. Um, and um, I like the fact that you don't charge for every EDI transaction, each document. Um, and it, you know, what I've come to learn is it's a minimum of seven transactions for each sale uh, in EDI because they charge you even for the acknowledgements. And so um, as a small business, <clears throat> it's not doing a lot of EDI um, transactions. It's a small part of our business, but it's a very important part of it. Um, Sin7 was the right solution for us. And so um, I uh, first worked with a gentleman named BJ as my right. one board specialist. And um, from the beginning, I was totally impressed with the customer support. BJ walked me through it. Um, you know, I'm not a real technical person. Um, <clears throat> as an officer, I had uh, folks in my organizations, my, my battalion and then brigade and, and later larger units that um, were experts um and and with technology and so i knew how to manage them but i wasn't the guy that was going to go in and program a router or set up um you know inventory and 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 all this product feed information and everything so vj um really helped me um and probably did a lot more than what he normally does with another customer but he was great and um then uh you know helped us learn um and and AFIS, um we were the first, your first customer that had an account with AFIS. So, um, you know, as, as we were trying to learn um, the EDI system, um, you guys uh, were Asherod and, and a couple other guys were working with um, AFIS, who, which is a big governmental bureaucracy that's very hard and they don't, they're not responsive like Amazon or other vendors are. Um, but I was really impressed with y'all's ability to work with them. Uh, to get the uh, system rolling. Um, and uh, with us being your first uh, customer to work with AFIS for uh, EDI. So that, I've yeah. uh, been really impressed with the EDI team. And then um, I would just wanna say right now, my account manager, Karu, is hands down the best account manager I've had with any application. And you know, since 2014, when I started doing this business, um, I've probably worked with between marketing companies and, and web developers and everything, maybe 50 different companies. Um, and uh, Karu, hands down, uh, is the best. She's intelligent. She's polite. She's professional. She's helpful. She is, uh, you know, very dependable and proactive. So, um, you know, what you're doing there with the account managers for, for a customer like me, a small business where, you know, we have six employees and uh, we're, we're doing everything from marketing to fulfillment to uh, influencer marketing on Instagram and email marketing and AdWords. Um, so, and then as far as our product feeds, we've got Walmart, um, Amazon, eBay, and, uh, and APHES and APHES Ecom. So that's a lot, no way I can be an expert in any of that. And um, so we're, we're totally pleased with the service we're getting out of the, uh, out of Sin7, and uh, please don't ever change my account manager. Let Karu do it forever. All right. Well, we'll be that in mind. But thanks for those kind words. Um, you know, when 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 the virus, I guess, first sort of came out on the news, it's it sort of like localized in China. Uh, I think I saw in your system, you have a mixture of local suppliers and also, I, I believe, some supplies from China. I mean, did that disrupt any of your supply chain at all with with the with the lockdown in, in China? You know, what's interesting is um, Chinese New Year, uh, you know, the factories normally shut down for about 30 days. Yeah. And so what we had done um, to prepare for that was we put in early orders, um, you know, so that we were pretty much set for the first and second quarter of uh, right, 2020. Okay. Um, so we got ahead of that a little bit. Um, but uh, there, there have, you know, they, they have been delayed. Um, with getting uh, product, but we, we're in good shape because I think we planned ahead. Right. So when, when you order from China, because of probably the Chinese New Year thing, you, you order for like a whole quarter or like first and second quarter? We did. Yeah. This year okay. we, we, we front loaded it. And, 
And I even, I even padded that. What I did was I based um, the order on sales of fourth quarter, which is our largest quarter by, by far. So right. I looked at fourth quarter, what, what, did, what did I need for that quarter? And I ordered it, um, you know, that uh, amount for first and second quarter. And uh, it's, it's actually um, probably a little bit more than we need. But, um, you know, we're, we're in a position where um, as long as sales continue, the, you know, the challenge we're going to have is when all the invoice, when all that inventory comes in and we have invoices, um, if sales drop, cash flow is really tight. Um, and in point two seven, the nonprofit that I run, um, my major fundraising events for um, for the year are normally in May. Those have now been canceled, right. so I'm going to be sitting on a lot of inventory that um, that I uh, am not going to be able. To, I'm not receiving donations to pay for it, so it's going to make me really cash tight, cash flow strapped. Yeah, okay. I mean, I think that those are. I mean, those are like a few months out and there's a lot of events being cancelled. Um, but, you know, I guess now now that the pandemic is squarely in the US, has that impacted your sales, you know, positively or negatively or not much at all? We are, um, we're actually up for March um, based on sales figures for last year, same time period. Right. Um, so, uh, we haven't really seen, um, you know, a, a decrease in sales. Um, and, and it may be that, you know, everything we make, we put a Bible verse on it. Our mission is to share right, God's okay. word. We do that by in, engraving the jewelry, any apparel we make, we put a Bible verse on it. And right now, a lot of people, because of the fear, they're starting to look for something that's bigger than themselves and they're turning to their faith. And so our jewelry is a daily reminder of God's promises. So it may be that, you know, um, for a period of time, um, you know, we, we may maintain sales better than some others. Um, but, you know, we are a discretionary item. Um, you know, when it gets down to somebody that has to put food on the table, they're going to they're gonna buy the food before they buy a piece of jewelry. So we, we may get uh, hit here in the future, depending on how long people stay out of work. Yeah, I thought your your situation um, going through your account. I thought jewelry, and I go, well, this will be interesting. Um, and then the nuance of that is, yeah, yours is very much um, shields of strength. You know, I guess in times like this, that's I guess people are looking for ways that they can stay strong. Mm -hmm. And I guess your products themselves are quite, um, uh, from a jewelry perspective, quite moderately priced. Yes. So it's, it's, it's not, it's not like on the luxury end. So I guess that that's why you're a little bit different, I guess, from other um, sort of jewelry customers that we might have. So uh, I guess um, you, you're uh, from a hindsight point of view is, is there, um, it looks like you've been sort of quite lucky to, to front load your stock. Um, uh, but when you sort of look back, are there any things you, you, you're going to do differently after this, um, after this, that this pandemic goes away, um, what would you see yourself do differently? You know, we were already working through our way to learn more about inventory management, and we're getting better and better at it. We're um, um, for a long time we haven't trusted the inventory, um, just because of uh, a, maybe a little bit of a lack of discipline internally, but also just going so fast uh, and not taking the time to learn the systems to understand better how we can use the tools and the reports to manage it. So uh, one thing that we did in the military is if um, the way that property is accounted for in the military um, is through an annual inventory that happens annually, you're going to do 100% inventory. And when a company commander changes command, and a new guy comes in, there's a hundred percent inventory. So before the command change of command happens, you, the, the incoming commander goes in and inventories every item to include the right. components that go with the item. To this is a stock for, take. Yep. To base, right, say, okay. Hey, everything's here. Okay. And so a lot of businesses do that, but in the military to stay proactive on top of it, we would do a 10% inventory. So let's say you have 100 items each month, you're going to do 10% of the 100. So, um, you know, let's say you had 120 items. So each month you're going to inventory 10 items, right? Because 12 months times 10 is 120. 
So you're right. looking at 10% of your inventory every month. We're doing that now. We started that back in, um, in October. And what I've been doing is um, really just focused on our high selling items or other items that maybe we're looking, um, you know, we've got other issues. We want to look at items that we aren't going to sell anymore. So I'll, I'll pull those items as part of that monthly inventory. So we're doing the monthly inventories. We're making immediate changes to the database uh, stock adjustments for that. And um, so we're, we're being a lot more proactive. I'm starting to use some of the standard reports as well. Um, I'm starting to understand them better. Um, so that's helping us. Uh, for instance, when I based um, the decision on what to order for, you know, at the end of the year, I went in and used um, the reports to see what, what had sold, how many items had sold of each of the, uh, of the pieces of jewelry. And then I looked at what, what, what did we have on hand and then I was able to, you know, make an informed decision on what to buy. In the past, that's kind of been, you know, Kenny, the owner, and the ladies in the fulfillment center, you know, doing a swag to 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 order what they thought was most important. Now we're back on right. it up. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, those changes are being made. Um, we were already in in uh, doing that, and and um, if we hadn't started it, um, we would have been caught with our pants down. I think you know, unprepared in this quarter. And uh, so going forward, what are we going to do better? Um, I'm going to probably say that we will, uh, you know, we'll put a lot more thought into having um, our inventory, you know, 100% as close to accurate as we can be and, um, and, and really make informed decisions and be proactive, anticipate, you know, use the tools that are in the system to forecast and uh, make sure that um, we've got our best selling items in stock. And the other thing I've added to the website is a pre-order capability. So right. if something goes out of a stock um, in big commerce. Now we have a way to pre-order it. And it's um, our web developer uh, built an application for us for that. So when an item goes to zero inventory in SIN 7, um, it kicks a value into big commerce of 15,000. So right. that 15,000 number tells the application to then change it to a pre-order um, capability on the front end of the site. And an example right now is we're sold out of um, a 24 inch chain for our ladies jewelry. So if you went to the website now and you went to these ladies necklaces, the pendants, that are offered with five different chain links. Four of them you can order right now. The other one, when you click on the 24 inch chain, it'll tell you it's, pretty, it's um, it says something like this order's pre-order capable and uh, your your item will arrive within three to four weeks. All right, so that, great. I mean, that, that would help some, I guess some cash flow. Yeah. Um, yes, that's well. right. Yes. Our experience is if you don't get the sale when they want it, they're not gonna come back. But if, right. they, if it has the ability to pre-order, then, you know, maybe 50 to 60 percent will say, OK, I can wait that long and they'll order it right then. So we're capturing some of those sales. But um, that required, um, you know, that required me to pay this developer uh, to do that. I would love to see the capability to be, um, you know, big commerce and, and uh, send seven to make that a. A capability like of a system. native a native capability yeah. okay i mean yeah. that's definitely something really good to look at i know since seven does natively have that ability obviously but how it talks the big commerce is probably something we can further look at so in, in terms of the the, the I, I guess that is an opportunity um that you've already exploited do you see sort of any sort of opportunities that you you think that you're looking at now to um to sort of uh, go after so has, has the situation created any opportunities in particular that you would see that would, um, you know, make Shields of Strength even stronger? Hmm. That's a good question. I'll put some thought into that. Um, off the top of my head, I can't give you an example right now. A capability that we would like um, is for you to be fully integrated with Google Shopping so that orders can be processed from Google Shopping. Right now, we're paying a third party called Go Data Feed, and they have an app called Go Order Feed. So the order is processed in Google Shopping. It comes to Go Order Feed. They then send it over into Big Commerce, and it ends up looking like it's it's a Big Commerce order coming into Send7. But if yeah, you could right. 
where the orders come directly in, that sales channel comes directly into your platform, that would save us that third party app. Yeah, I mean, we, we do have the, uh, we've worked on something um, in terms of pushing um, data into Google Shop. Google Shop itself is not an e-commerce platform. So, okay, let, let me get back to you on that because we had actually worked extensively with um, on this integrating into Google Shop, but, but I'm not so sure what extent we've released it to customers. Mm -hmm. So let me, I'll see if I can get back to you on that. So is, yep. is there anything yep. you are doing? It would be, yeah. the other one would be product feeds. Right now we pay GoData feed to do a product feed into Walmart and also right. a product feed into eBay. And then we, I was paying them to do a product feed into Amazon. But um, what, I, what I found is it's just easier for me to upload product information into Amazon um, doing a, uh, an Excel file upload. Yeah, um, Amazon's extremely complicated in terms of yeah. the feed products into. They've got so many rules, so many sort of uh, category structures that you've got to um, just follow that's sort of almost almost impossible for us to push product up there. Yeah, and it's, um, it, it, you're right. I mean, for, and especially yeah. for jewelry. The, yeah. you know, if you look at an Excel spreadsheet, it goes everywhere from column A over to like column BB or no, EE. It goes all yeah. the way A to Z, then AA to yeah. A. A Z, and it, and it keeps going. It's like it's crazy. Those those templates are ridiculous, and they got one for every industry. So it, it, it's 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 sort of a monumental task. So that's why we abandoned that, trying to okay. even think about pushing products up there. Okay. So what about to, to wrap up uh, in terms of you personally? I mean, what do you do to to stay sane? Are, are you working remotely from home or or not? I do. Uh, yeah. I live right next to a, um, a Civil War battlefield. Um, right. It's the Battle of Kennesaw Mountain. So um, I've got about 40 miles of trails here that um, it's, uh, it'll never be developed. It's just natural woods with beautiful trails. And um, I just now uh, got back from doing a, uh, about a four mile hike. I, I hike, I get out in my office every day and I've got a golden retriever there. Um, I used to be a, you know, a runner. I ran every day, but uh, I'm 58 now and my back doesn't let me run anymore. My knees don't want me to run. So I hike and then uh, I've got a, uh, I've got a gym in my basement that, you know, I'll work out down there. That's how I stay sane. And then um, I do public speaking. Um, I, uh, I travel quite a bit for 0.27 um, and uh, this, uh, you know, since 2014, We've given a half a million members of the armed forces um, a dog tag and great scripture. Um, since 2016, I've given um, about 120,000 police officers a, uh, a custom dog tag we made for them. And then uh, family members of soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines that have been killed and police officers and firefighters have been killed in the line of duty. I've given 26,000 family members um, a really beautiful high-end piece of jewelry we made for them that'll never it's out it, we made it out of surgical grade stainless steel so they'll never tarnish it's a multi-generational piece that we made um to give to these family members it's, it's engraved with the scripture that says greater love has no one than to lay down their life for a friend and uh the purpose of that jewelry is to is twofold one is to um uh, the worst fear that um, any family member has of a soldier or a police officer is that someone's going to forget their loved one and the sacrifice that they made for our freedom. So that dog, that, that gift lets them know that we haven't forgotten. And then two, it's, uh, it's given them a piece of God's word to let them uh, know that uh, the God acknowledges that death that, that their loved one made. And that uh, when you believe in Jesus Christ, you'll have eternal life and you'll see your, you'll see your loved one again uh, in heaven. So that's yeah, that great. keeps me sane to to work with these uh, incredible families, um, you know, travel around the United States doing that, speaking at different events, um, and then uh, you know here at home, um, I just uh, I've got a beautiful office, got a beautiful, uh, you know, my my outlook out here in front of the house, just looking out at dogwood trees. Um, All right, there we go. Look at you. From my, uh, second floor uh, of my house here. So, yeah, nature for me, um, that was one of the hardest things leaving the military is I was, you know, 
I love being outside and, uh, you know, I was always outside, whether it was in the woods here in the United States or if it was in countries around the world, I was out and about doing things very active. So, uh, David, so any sort of final words of advice or encouragement for customers like yourself um, or or our customers, Sin7 customers or companies like yourself out there? Yeah, we're going to get through this and um, we're going to, you know, we're going to be a whole lot stronger than we were going into it. And, um, you know, we've been through world wars. We've been through terrorist, major terrorist attacks. We've been through the Great Depression. And um, this is a cycle we're going through. And, um, you know, the main, the main thing is uh, God is still on his throne. He's still in control. And uh, none of this is a surprise to him. And, uh, you know, everything's going to be okay. We're going to be fine. Okay. Thanks for your time, David. Some powerful words. And yeah, it's been a pleasure. So um, I'm pleasantly sort of, you know, really happy that you're, you're safe and mostly sane. And uh, yeah, hopefully catch up in some better times. Okay. Thank you. Hey, and thank you for what you're doing with your company. Um, you give a great value and um, your team, I have never talked to anyone that has not been professional, polite, and proactive. And, um, you know, that, that normally is an, it's top down. Um, you've developed a culture that's going to make you successful regardless of the market, because every small business is, is, is looking for exactly that. They're looking for value. They're looking for people that are professional, that know what they're doing and they're polite and they're proactive. You keep that culture uh, and you take care of your employees, um, you, you are, um, you're gonna go to the top. You, you, will, you will grow this business and it'll be far greater than you've ever dreamed of. Keep the culture, don't change what you're doing. Great, thanks Dave. I'm pretty sure when they hear that, their, their morale will lift instantly. Okay, thanks for your time.